This is the fourth generation MX-5, also known as the Miata. Looking at this car, much more dynamic. It's actually smaller than the original Miata back in 1989, but it has more interior volume. More on that in a second. Now the MX-5 or the Miata has been a huge hit with baby boomers. This is the next generation with a much more dynamic look. That's what they're trying to do with this car. I have a car that appeals to the next generation of roadster lovers. Well, we're here in California getting to drive the canyons just outside of Los Angeles. In order to appeal to that new younger buyer, Mazda has used their Kodo Solon Motion design with a much more anchored look. You can see the front and the rear of the vehicle start at a high position and then go out and down towards the bottom. And that makes the car look like it's stuck to the road. Instead of the old roasters, they used to have more of a round look to them in the middle, like British sports cars. So this new, more aggressive look is hopefully going to get those younger buyers to dealerships. The high level goal for, for every MX-5 has always been the same. Uh, we really focus on making this car fun to drive uh, for everybody who might drive at whatever their skill level. And that means you know, everyone from someone who's just learning how to drive all the way to a professional race driver. Uh, and that really you know, is, a, is a very tricky uh, thing to do. It, makes, it forces us to make a car that's really balanced and really nimble and really communicates with the driver well so the driver really knows what's going on and can, can control the car really intuitively. In keeping with the idea of appealing to a new, younger marketplace, Mazda has implemented the same system they have in their other cars. That's a screen in the center of the dash and a control unit between the seats. But if you take that away, the rest of the dash is very simple, just like all Miatas in the past. The seating position has been improved, with the steering wheel, the pedals, and the seats all now perfectly in line. There's more headroom with a revised roof, and the seats go back farther for taller drivers. The highlight, though, is the new speaker system and the headrests that allow you to hear phone calls, and on the top models, you get a Bose sound system. So even though there's quite a few exterior changes and certainly plenty of welcome interior changes, what Mazda hasn't changed is the fact that this is a lightweight car, front engine, rear wheel drive, essentially the same as it always has been but it's like a diamond that just keeps getting polished and polished and polished to the point now where it's just perfection. Under the hood is a two liter Skyactiv engine, same that's in the Mazda 3, but this has been tuned uh, slightly differently for this application. All new six speed manual transmission, even a new differential in the back. All of this goes to save weight of about 150 pounds so you have a lighter car with 155 horsepower and 148 foot-pounds of torque. Now on paper, you'd say, well, that's less power than the previous car. But when you shed that much weight and you have a direct injection engine that is so precise, this car just dances. Up front, you've got double wishbone front suspension, uh, multi-link rear suspension, and it's just so fantastic. You can put this car in the corner and you have to make a correction. It's still got so much left in reserve. It's quieter than the previous car. It's more forgiving than the previous car. Yes, it's got electric power steering, but I'd be hard pressed if anybody drove this car to notice a difference over the previous car. Wonderful seating position. You sit two millimeters lower than the previous car. So all the stuff that the old one did, this one just does better. I've always loved this car. I just love it. Uh, there's always pressure from, especially from people who haven't driven these cars very much, thinking, oh, it needs more power, it needs to be bigger. Uh, it's one of those things where you have to drive the car to really get the, how important it is to have the car simple and pure and especially lightweight. Um, the, the power thing has been interesting. Uh, the more powerful you make a car, the, the more you have to tune it to handle that power, uh, and you can't make it as neutral and as nimble. Uh, so by keeping the power relatively modest, it makes it easier to, for the driver to really use the whole car, use full throttle, get into a corner and really feel the balance of the car. Uh, and, and it's really, it's more fun to drive uh, a slow car fast than it is to drive a fast car slow. Uh, and, and the more you drive this car, the more that really kind of sinks in, becomes a part of your being. 
Now, as exciting as it is to get an all new MX-5, you might want to wait just a little bit longer because the car we have here is equivalent to the GS trim we have in Canada with the sport package. But our sport package is going to be slightly different. You're going to get the BBS wheels you see here, the red Brembo brakes that have more heat capacity in them, and inside there's going to be Recaro leather seats that are heated. That package will not be available until the 2017 model year in Canada. The other thing is, this car right now is only available with a soft top, no retractable hard top. So they haven't said it's officially going to come, but you can almost bet they're going to have a retractable hard top in this MX-5. So it's going to be interesting to see what comes down the road with the MX-5.